Is there something you wish you had the nerve to do? Welcome to You've Got Nerve, the podcast that teaches you how to conquer your fears, upgrade your mindset, and get the nerve to go after whatever you want. If you wish you had the guts to go all in on your goals, dreams, and desires, this show is for you. I'm Master Certified Life Coach Susan Hyatt, and I am so excited for you to join me on this journey. Welcome to You've Got Nerve. Today's guest is Emily. She has over 20 years as a financial planner, but here's the thing. She's trying to get the nerve to finally heal her body image issues and start dressing in a way that reflects how she is personally and professionally. And we have a little surprise for Emily on this episode. You're gonna wanna see who our celebrity guest is that pops in with some special guidance. If you've ever struggled with your own body image and how to dress in a way that's truly success, this episode is for you and I hope you enjoy being a little fly on a little wall to hear this coaching session. Well, thank you for being here, Emily. I hear uh, I hear there's something you want to get some nerve up to do. What would it be? I need to learn how to dress myself. <laughs> oh, really? You look dressed to me. You look awfully cute to me. Well, thank you. It, I, it took some effort. <laughs> <laughs> you look good. But what when you say I need to learn how to dress myself, what why do you say that? And what's the difference between how you're showing up now and how you want to show up? Um, so I have never been someone that has enjoyed fashion. It just was so far down on my list of priorities. I was that girl in high school that showed up in jeans and a men's t-shirt and that was kind of calling it quits. Um, for about a decade while I was in the thick of raising my kids, I don't think I bought any clothes for myself my friends would bring me bags of stuff that they had cleaned out of their closet and I just you know in my professional career even made do with hand-me-downs and things that other people had bought for themselves and um I I struggle when I go shopping because I'll see something super cute on the rack and I put it on and it does not fit me in any way I'm you know a chesty girl broad-shouldered and I, the things that I like tend to not look great on me and I don't want to dress frumpy. And so a lot of the things I think that are in my size aren't things that make me feel beautiful and powerful and sexy. And so I just kind of opt to not <laughs> do any of it. And I make do with, you know, the same four or five things that are, are my go-to. So part of me showing up today, I have an interview later today. And so I have a red blazer that I'm going to pair with this uh, fancy little lacy top. But um, yeah, so I'm showing up today for you and also for an interview here in a little bit. Um, but this is one of like five things in my closet that I'm like, yeah, no, this is good. <laughs> and so the five things in your closet that you think are good, mm -hmm. um, what do you like about them? And how do you feel when you put them on? So they're, they're, they're different. There's a little unique detail to it. Like this has the pretty little scallops and it's a lace overlay. And so it's, it's just a little bit different. The red blazer that I'm going to wear later that goes with this has a little structure to it and a little bit of a notch collar. So it's not your typical kind of like, and it's red, red, it's like power red. So that feels great. I, I like things that are um, just a little on the unusual side both in my my personal dress and my professional dress and the two are very very different so professional dress I tend to be more covered up in my personal dress I tend to you know play a little more and so but I like I like unique details I like structure I like things that are just a little bit outside of the norm mm -hmm. um yeah okay so I have a question Mm -hmm. why you use the word make do or the phrase make do multiple yeah. times why just making do uh, many many reasons um again I don't enjoy the process of shopping I'm I'm not a mall person I don't like the whole you know gauntlet of grabbing things off the rack and going into the the dressing room and dressing and undressing and redressing and looking at myself in the mirror and 
all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I tend to do more of my shopping online, which is really hit or miss. I mean, the fabric quality and the, you know, what it looks like when it actually comes in sometimes is very, very different. Sometimes it's a win and sometimes it's a return immediately kind of situation. Um, I guess I, I don't know. I haven't found a theme or a common thread in the things that I like. It's, mm -hmm. It's not like wrap dresses always work on me. Sometimes wrap dresses work. Sometimes they don't. Right. Um, so I haven't found enough consistency in what I like and also looks good on me, which is hard to find both. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I tend to, you know, I'll find something and I'll wear it till it's threadbare and then panic because I have to replace it. <laughs> And so, right, I, I mean, listen, I used to be somebody that really enjoyed shopping. And, and I really don't, I mean, I like to look good, but like the whole process, like you're saying, of like changing and trying on and all those things and shipping back and all that can be um, a little bit of a pain in the butt. And I'm also not someone that m most things fit right off the rack because I'm, you know me in real life, I'm short, I'm 5'3". Um, also with some curves and, um, like short waisted, like, I don't know very many people who can just shop right off the rack, but they exist. Um, but my question for you is if you were showing up in a way that felt, um, authentic and you felt confident and powerful um, and at ease, what might be different for you? Ah, uh, goodness. Um, I, I think a lot. I, you know, the whole internal monologue, the voice in my head that's always saying horrible things. Um, you know, when I wear things that I feel great in, that's kind of shushed. And so, I think that for me would probably be, be the biggest thing. Like let's shush that horrible negative voice in my head. That's always like, yeah, I know you're too fat to wear that, or, you know, that doesn't look great on you or you need to tone it down a bit or, or whatever it may be. Mm. So the current dialogue in that beautiful brain of yours is you need to tone it down or you look fat in that. Yeah, um, cover, cover up, tone it down, tuck it away, mm -hmm. hide it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know where you got that um, mindset? Yeah. 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 Um, I am the biggest person in my family by a pretty significant clip. And so um, when I was in high school and an athlete, I still was curvy, but I was thin Kirby, we'll call it fit Kirby. Um, you know, it was, there were, you know, you're going to attract the wrong kind of attention looking like you do, or you're going to, and I think that was the start of my like covering up. Um, you know, I wore minimizer bras for years and years and years, just trying to look smaller. Um, you know, and it was all the things that the older generations will say, you know, men are going to want one thing from you and one thing only. And, you know, are you sure you want to look like that? Or is that what you're trying to say? And, um, you know, it's funny, I, even now at 47 years old with all this gray hair and, you know, all the extra weight and everything, I'm much more free to wear like super low cut dress and go out and be really confident in it than I was when I was, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old and looked amazing. Um, but yeah, I think, it, I think it started kind of back then. Yeah. And so my question for you is if, if you were to allow yourself to not be toned down and, uh, oh, I got a face out of you, <laughs> to, to not tone it down, to not cover it up and to accentuate the curves that your body has as it's appearing today, um, what would that mean for you? Um, it's so far outside the realm of any place I've existed that, I mean, I've had pockets of it, right? Like, you know, 
on vacation away where no one can see me and I mean, who cares? I'm going to dress how I want and I'm never going to see these people again and, and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, it's, it's always disheartening when you've got the voice in your head and then mm -hmm. you hear another woman speak the words that mm -hmm. your brain's telling you. And I don't know why we do that. I, We're trained to do it. We're brainwashed to do it. Anyway, terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. So, you know, when you hear, especially another woman, I mean, we're supposed to be here for each other, right? To lift each other up and to support each other and, and you know, advocate for each other unapologetically, you know, you should you really should button that button or, you know, you need to, you need some boob tape to take that down or, I mean, whatever it may be. Um, I don't know. Cause like, even in those moments where I've left the house and, and outfits that I'm like, I feel super hot. And then you go out and you hear those kind of side comments, negative comments, things it like, it really rolls you back. Cause then it's, it's not just the voice in your head. Then it's, there's a confirmation that's kind of there. Um, and, it, and so my personal favorite, Emily, is what I, I um, also experienced this, as you as you know, and um, in terms of people projecting their own ideas of how my body should appear and or how I should adorn and dress my body as it's appearing. My personal favorite is when people message me and they're like, oh, I think you might not realize there was like a nipple slip. Um, you might want to take that picture down. I'm like, dude, that was so on purpose, <laughs> but, but I digress, right? Like, so it's, you have these terrible voices in your head, culture at large, other women confirm those terrible voices. So then what happens? Yeah. Then I go back into like the frumpy clothes and, and, and then I'll go like to the, the extreme, right? So it's, you know sweatpants and t-shirt and no makeup and my hair and a messy bun or a ball cap on and and all of that kind of stuff and so um it's funny because I it's like I overcorrect into the like I just want to be invisible and hide and draw as little attention to myself as humanly possible and so if um if you were to have help thinking different thoughts about your body and then with those new thoughts, um, understanding how to flex this body confidence in a way that's like, oh, that's my style. I like to feel this way when I'm getting dressed. Do you imagine what feeling state you most want to feel when you get dressed and, and are captured by your own gaze? I, you know, honestly, just want to feel like, like me. Mm. Um, yeah, I, and I'm working on it. So I made the decision at the start of the pandemic to stop coloring my hair and have gotten more compliments on my hair now that I've, I've let it go gray than I ever did when I was coloring it or, you know, doing whatever. And so there's a power that comes with like stepping into my own authentic space and just being me without all the extra um what's really funny though is at the same time I kind of stopped coloring my hair I started playing with makeup a bit which was not anything that I had ever done before so I was watching makeup tutorials and playing with glitter eyeshadow and all of this different stuff and so um that piece of it has just stayed like neck up so far and I haven't I haven't moved it into the clothing realm but I, I would love to uh, just not sure how, when I hate it so much. <laughs> well, we might have somebody here that doesn't hate it so much. And I'm going to invite her to turn her camera on and unmute herself if she's able to. Hi, Susan. Hi, Emily. Hi, Hi. Elsa. Hi. I've been eavesdropping. I hope that's okay, Emily. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. <laughs> so Emily, this is Elsa Isaac, who is, is my personal stylist and the stylist to lots of celebrities and, um, it, you know, people who look fabulous. And I asked her to, um, to bomb, to drive by bomb our Zoom uh, <laughs> today so that she could talk a little bit with you about her perspective as being a stylist and, and what it Thank means. You adoring yourself in a way that feels powerful and authentic. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I can obviously relate to your story, Emily, on so many levels. And I think, you know, it just like, this is exactly why I do what I do, because I feel like we are so disempowered by, by this industry, the clothing industry. And I think that the biggest way to combat that is to like, kind of go at it in a counterintuitive way. So what if we didn't focus on um, what, you know, trends are out there, what stores are out there, like, let's focus on you. So like, what is your body shape truly, you know, like look at the numbers, um, you know, all of the things like Susan mentioned, she's five, three, I'm five, three, she's short waisted. And this is none of these are bad things at all. This it's just data. Mm-hmm. And the more data, you know, about your body, the more equipped you are to determine, first of all, what store you want to go to, where you want to start. It's really just allows you to determine where to go, but knowing your body and then really understanding what you're drawn to at this point. So I don't know if you like Pinterest or on Pinterest, but curating a board that really just helps you determine what what you're gravitating towards in this specific moment in your life. And realizing that once you pin enough, like coming back to it, right? Pin for a few minutes, walk away, come back to it the next day, edit out what no longer resonates, doing that over a few days up to a week. And really what happens is you're going to see a pattern, patterns start to, to form. You may, mm-hmm. you may find that you like print. You might find that you like solids. You might find that you like separates or dresses or whatever. But that visual kind of um, starting point for you allows you to know when you walk into a store with all kinds of options available, where to stop, what to stop and pick up. Right. So it's starting with you. It's not like, oh, the mannequin's wearing this thing. Let me try that. You're mm-hmm. you're you're referencing this Pinterest board that you curated over days because it reflects what is applicable to you in the now. And it doesn't mean that everything is going to work. And it doesn't mean you have to translate everything um, from the boards to be identical to what's on someone else's body, but it's looking for the clues and the details that you're that are that like, why are you resonating? with this picture, really asking yourself. So you, you know, the details Mm -hmm. and then what Susan asked you just now, how do you want to feel in your clothes? I always ask my clients to come up with three words that describe that. So then, and also it from just from an efficiency standpoint, I love that you said you like to shop online because right now with all of the kind of supply chain issues, that is the most efficient way to shop. And so going and finding a store like Nordstrom, I will say has been, is almost a go-to for every client. I supplement with other stores, but the inventory at Nordstrom is really diverse. Um, Again, I don't know your details, but I'm just going to suggest Nordstrom because it's the easy one and it applies to so many of my clients. And you may have to supplement with other stores, right? But going to these stores and using all the, like, what are my numbers? what is, what is my Pinterest board say? Like, what is, what is the visual um, style inspo there? What, and then choosing more than one thing. So you might have to get, I I always shop in numbers with, for my clients. So I might be sending, you know, Susan, if she has an event where she needs three looks, I'm sending her about 30 to 40 garments. Oh, wow. And that's to to get three looks to get three. So okay. it's, it's not, it has nothing to do with your body being wrong at all. It's that there's a bajillion designers out there and it's, it's our job to go and find the designers that suit our body shapes the best. And sometimes like Susan mentioned too, it's not going to be a hundred percent, right? Fitting mm-hmm. off the rack is like winning the lottery. How often do we win the lottery? <laughs> not never, <laughs> not, not very often. Right. Sure. So think, what if you went into it with that, like frame of reference, knowing that, you know what, this is not, cause these designers have no idea who we are. Mm-hmm. Right. So we have to understand that, okay, I just need it to be 85% of the way there and I can tweak the rest and come and tailor it. And then I have a custom fit garment. Okay. Right. And when you're looking at 30 items, let's say, you can make a better decision of what you love as opposed to like, and, and of the 30 items guaranteed half of that will fit your body, but do you love it is the question. Mm-hmm. 
So right. let me ask a question. I'll, I'll tell you a little about my body shape and then I want to ask a question. Um, a how do I know question? So yeah. I am 5'8", broad shouldered, triple D. My waist does nip in. I have a booty. And so I, how do I know that even with an alteration, it'll be something that will, because those little nips and tucks can completely change an outfit. So I always find myself, and it's probably because I've spent 20 years working in the investment industry, but I love a button down and they just don't work on me. <laughs> they make me look very boxy. They always gap at the, at the bus, but they're never long enough. Um, so I, I don't own a single button down, um, but I love the, the look of that. So how do you get from like this might work with, with alterations to knowing like, if I just pull it in here, or let it out there, it'll be good. Well, with your specific example, I love how specific it was. 100% a button down can work, right? You have to size up. Okay. You have to size up, make sure it fits on your shoulder. So shoulder and the shoulder line should sit right at the edge of your shoulder, not over. Okay. Right. So if it's over, it's too big. Um, so it should sit here. And then also it should fit over your chest. Those are the two areas you need to fit first. And then the, um, the waist can be easily taken in. That's an easy, that's the easy part. Um, and of course, make sure that your sleeves are the right length. Sometimes you do have to take in some volume at the sleeve. Again, an easy thing to tailor. And then the button in between the buttons is a common issue and it drives me nuts because designers can easily fix this. I just bought a dress from Zara not too long ago and it wasn't that expensive, maybe 60 bucks, you know, it's Zara. And it did the same thing. The, and the whole dress is buttons down the front. So I just went and got hook and eyes placed in between each button. So it stays closed. So two, two easy fixes that you just have to find the material, the color and the structure or even style of a button down that you really, really love and know that you have to size up to fit your, your shoulders and your chest, knowing that you're gonna tailor down your waistline and add hook and eyes in between the buttons. Okay. Right. Designers can't, they don't want to put all these detail into a garment because it costs more money. Right. So that's, that's an, that's a perfect example of a garment working 85% of the way there. Um, and then what you can do too, what I have clients do is take sometimes depending on the kind of material you're working with, it may be a bit more, you know, a little bit more pricier to tailor. So take it to a garment, find out what the cost would be, and then factor it if that's worth it for you. Maybe it's, maybe it, it's more cost effective to find another button down. Uh, mm -hmm. But understanding that there's so many ways that you can customize um, fit, you know, challenges in garments is really so much, it's just empowering because now you're not leaving it to the designers to like make it right for you. You just know that you have to, and, and it's easier to say yes to things that you love because you know that you don't have this illusion, disillusion really, that, that, it's supposed to fit me 100% of the way there. And it, and it, it doesn't have to at all. And, and listen, this was so empowering for me, Emily, when I started working with Elsa and realized that because I, I went into my first fitting with her with all the body positivity that I have still being a little bit apologetic about like, well, I don't know if this is going to work around my booty or I don't know. Nah, nah, nah. And, and it was just sort of like, oh, right. Like there's, my body is not wrong because something doesn't fit. You know, a designer had some, some, some six foot five, you know, woman in mind who these sleeves might fit better than me. And I'm five, three, that's okay. Um, and just learning to buy less and investing in some tailoring has been pretty life-changing for my wardrobe and for how I appreciate how things fall on my body. That's great. I, uh, I'm nervous, but maybe a little optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> what gets you nervous about this? Yeah. I, you know, I think it's just um, 47 years of not feeling comfortable or not, you know, 
wearing the hand-me-downs for all those years and um, not making this a priority for myself. It, I don't know, that feels like there's a, I don't want to say risk because that's not the right word, but there's some trepidation there about like, can I do this? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, what might get in your way of actually trying this? Um, honestly, to me giving up and not sticking with it. I mean, I, I loved hearing like 30 to 40 outfits may net three that work um it's a numbers game I guess I'll have to equate it to dating <laughs> <laughs> maybe I just need to reframe that a bit in my mind and yeah I think that's actually gonna th that realization should really be freeing in a lot of ways right because it's it, it's it's just the way it works I think like put trying on three things them those three things not fitting and then feeling defeated is is so not indicative of the true inventory options that are out there for you you know and so when you try on especially at a place like Nordstrom right it doesn't have to be Nordstrom but I do like to always mix in one department store because of the variety of brands there and that the, you have the ability to try several brands under one roof is that then because I noticed you said um, consistency has been tough for you. And so if you committed to like six months, right. Of like, let me buy 20 items every month, knowing that you can return them, obviously make sure they're not final sale items, mm -hmm. but just experiment. What if you experimented without the pressure of anything needing to work, right? Like you wouldn't, I love that you equated it with dating because you wouldn't want to rush it with some guy that you're kind of half certain about right? right so like what if every month you committed to trying 20 garments at different stores every month and trying them on and make like create a date for yourself right have a two-hour window on the weekend create a playlist have your favorite beverage and snacks around and then just try on clothes in the comfort of your own home with your own lighting in your own mirror and then you can like you'll have a different perspective obviously right away but try everything on and ask yourself, does this make me feel? I always say, pick three words that you want your clothes um, to make you feel and ask yourself, does this make me feel at least two of my three words? And then walk around in it, sit in the garment, you know? And really that is such a different way to evaluate because you can actually sit with yourself and, and, and see how that garment. And honestly, the yes pieces, you don't even, like it's always a yes. Like I can, I can tell on Susan before she says anything, if she's, if she's like feeling a garment instantly. <laughs> How do you know? I'm a terrible poker player. Yeah. Yeah. Not even like your whole, like sh literally every client will stand taller. They move like the way they look at themselves in the mirror in that garment changes. So yeah. you'll start to pick up on those things. And then when you say yes to like the things you say yes to, you will start to build a uh, kind of like a brand profile and a silhouette profile, you know? And it just builds and builds and builds from there. But just know that like, how would you have known this, right? This isn't something that we're taught. This is something that we're just supposed to figure out, but it's so nuanced. It's so nuanced and requires. And I also wanted to mention too, before I forget, I love how you mentioned that you look for details, like the, the details that make a garment different. That is all style and clothing is, is paying attention to those details. And, and figuring out, cause you're, so you're already doing it, but now it's just like, how can you do it more efficiently? And also I would say, what if you weren't more covered up in your professional world? What if you played more the way you do in your personal wardrobe? Cause that sounds like that's who you are really. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, I almost feel like I have two separate identities. There's the work me and then there's the, you know, after five on Friday me. So I think they can, I, I think they can meet more. Okay. That's scary. That's that's the scary part right there. <laughs> I work in a very conservative industry, so I'll have to I'll have to feel that one out a little bit. It doesn't have to be right away either, right? Yeah. I think I think it takes time. It's an evolution for sure. But I do, I I don't think that they're at least you know my my perspective of this current professional 
kind of world we're, we're entering is, is more about who you are mm-hmm. and the more of yourself that you can inject into that because who you are is your work too. It's, it's, it's how you do the work that you do. So why, why not allow her to be seen all the time? So how do I navigate past um, the frumpiness of most of the clothes that are my size? Because that is not me. Of what you currently own or what's no, out there? No, just, just what's out there. It's, it seems like a lot of the stuff in those, you know, size 14, 16 range, it just, it feels very frumpy for lack of a better term. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you like a couple of go-tos that I use store-wise is like 11 on Array is a great um, online retailer um, that is really, I think, kind of curating from designers who are not doing the frumpy at, at those sizes because it makes no sense, right? Like tailoring is probably like just, it's always integral. So 11 on Array is a great store. And I also like, like Eloquy, it really just depends on um, your aesthetic and your style, um, aesthetic and, and inspo. Uh, but I think again, sometimes maybe, maybe there's something about a, you know, a, a garment that you like that seems frumpy. Let's say, let's say every, there's so much about it you like and is interesting to you online, right? I think it's worth trying and purchasing, purchasing it and getting it on your body. Maybe it's a tailoring thing. I, a lot comes down to tailoring. You know, oftentimes it's just because there's not enough detail put in, there's not enough darts put into a garment or they haven't, you know, like you said, it's, it's oftentimes what they, their default for designers is boxy. And, you know, if it's, if it's an easy, easy, a fabric that's easy to work with, like a cotton or polyester, that's such an easy tailor fix. So I think really understanding that tailoring can be a game changer for you, um, and, and addressing that there is, there is going to be a trial period where you're just going to have to try all the brands and then determine it, you know, what your top five are. And then, you know, that that can be your go-to where you're constantly seeing what, what new inventory that that brand uh, brings in. Cause they do change and add to their inventory pretty frequently. Uh, but really you kind of need to cast the net pretty wide in the beginning. Okay. I can do that. And so, so Emily, let's say I'm going to have all the confidence in the world that you're going to make this Pinterest board and you're going to experiment. Um, have you by chance looked at 11 on array or Eloquy online? Never even heard of them. Oh. Not even sure I spelled them right when I wrote them down. Right. <laughs> well, well, we'll definitely give you the the URLs. Um, okay. But like, let's say you go do your Pinterest board um, as part of your homework, and then you get online and you check out Eleven on Array and Eloquy. Um, maybe you make a a uh, a trip to the nearest Nordstrom, which I don't know. That might be Indy. Um, might be Indianapolis. But if you do all of those things um, and submit those things to us, would you be interested in working with Miss Elsa Isaac? Absolutely. Elsa, <laughs> would you be interested in, uh, in this experiment with the podcast and working with Emily? Yes, let's do it. Okay, so you have to do your homework first, though, Emily. I will. <laughs> Are you excited? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Listen, this was an Oprah moment. I'm going to need a scream or something. <laughs> I'm excited and nervous at the same time. <laughs> what are you most nervous about? Let's just, let's just zip it up, nip it in the butt. What is going on in that brain? I think it's just all of the the internal monologue that's been there for decades that I need to just get past. Yeah. And that's going to take some time too. So I guess then the the question is, can you entertain the belief? I'm open to the possibility that I can see myself, that it's safe to see myself and be seen. Yeah. 
if I can let my hair go gray and feel beautiful with my gray hair, which is something I never thought I'd be able to do, I can believe that I can find clothes that I feel great in. Listen, we're about to rock your world. Elsa, do you take this as a personal challenge? Oh, yes, always. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, listen, listen, you don't even know the people Elsa Isaac has transformed. She is about to rock your world, but you have to be willing to be open to this process. I'm excited. Yay. Yay. I am open to the process. I need to be challenged. I thrive under pressure. Okay. Oh. Well, thrive under pressure. What about thriving under love and devotion? Oh, that's good too. That's a new world for me though. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be about adorning yourself in ways that are loving and becoming devoted to letting the world know who you really are. I'm ready for it. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you, Emily, for so vulnerably coming on this, this uh, podcast and sharing with us um, all of these details. And thank you, Elsa Isaac, for um, surprising my podcast guest here and sharing your brilliance. Yes, thank thank you. you so much. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. Emily, I have no concerns, none. Okay, I trust you. Yay. Well, you'll have to come back on the podcast so that we can see what happens. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Elsa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching and listening to today's episode of You've Got Nerve. I hope this episode has inspired you to get the courage and confidence to go after everything you want. And listen, if you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening. Your reviews really mean the world to me. And when you review the podcast, we have the potential to reach even more people who want to get up the nerve to create what they crave and become unstoppable. Is there something you need to get the nerve to do? The first step is saying yes to yourself, yes to what you want, and yes to whatever it is you crave. Hey, exciting. We're going to Morocco. And yes, I have just a couple of spots left. The women who have already signed up are amazing and fabulous and want you to have the time of your life. You want to go to Casablanca? You want to go to the markets? You want to go on hot air balloon rides? Get your ass in on this retreat, okay? Details in the show notes. Excited for the next episode of You've Got Nerve, but don't want to wait a whole week? Get motivational texts from me to help you gain more courage and confidence in your life. Just text me at 812-408-1823. And if you've got a question for me, we're adding some special Q&A episodes of You've Got Nerve in the near future and we're looking for listeners to participate. You can send a voice message of your question by visiting you'vegotnervepodcast.com. That's all for today's episode of You've Got Nerve. Now it's time to go and get what you want. More confidence, more money, more energy, more pleasure. Go after your goals like never before because you've got the nerve.